Hello, I am Neil Jain from QCFinance.in and will teach about R programming basics. It's part 1. Now in this presentation I will cover introduction, why we use R, R paradigm, its overview, interface and the workspace. And the remaining topic will be covered in the next part of the R basics. Now coming towards the introduction, R is GNUS that is a language and environment for data manipulation, calculation and graphical display. Now some main points about the R programming is, R software is similar to the award winning S system okay, which was developed at Bell laboratory. It is a suite of operation for calculations on arrays in particular matrices. The graphical facilities for data analysis and display either directly at the computer or on the hard copy is also available on the R software. A well developed programming language which includes conditional loops, user defined recursive functions and input and output facilities and also a large coherent integrated collection of intermediate tools for interactive data analysis. The core of R is an interpreted computer language that is it allows branching and looping as well as modular programming using the functions. Okay, the most of the user visible functions in R are written in R calling upon a smaller set of internal primitives. It is also possible for the user to interface to produce procedures written in C, C++ or Fortran language for efficiency and also to write additional primitives. Now why R? Why we should use R? Because it's free, it runs on a variety of platforms including Windows, Unix and Mac operating system. Also provides an unparalleled platform for programming new statical methods in an easy and straightforward manner. It contains advanced statical routines not yet available in other packages. It is the main advantage. It also has state-of-the-art graphics capabilities. Now, our paradigm is different. That is, rather than setting up a complete analysis at once, the process is highly interactive in R. That is, you run a command, okay, then take the results and process it through another command. Take those results and process it through another command and etc. Now the cycle may include transforming the data and looping back through the whole process again. You stop when you feel that you have fully analyzed the data. Now how to download our software? It is very easy. You can directly go on the Google, use R or Crane. Okay, Crane means Comprehensive R Archive Network. Type on the Google and you can easily get the links for downloading it. For example, a link can be rproject.org and many other links. This is about the R overview. Uh, that it is a comprehensive statistical and graphical programming language and is a dialect of the S language. And some more details about the R. R initially written by Ross Hilaka and Robert and since 1997 international R code team of 15 people with access to common CVS Archive. R overview about the programming on R. On the R you will get a uh, command prompt an arrow okay or run a set of commands from a source file in the r there is a wide variety of data types including vectors matrices data frames and lists and to queue r you can use q and open braces in r most of the functionality is provided through built in and user created functions okay and the basic functions are available by default such as sine, cos, exponential and power functions etc. Now coming towards the R interface. Okay, start the R system. 
the software you downloaded. The main window RGUI with a sub window R console will appear. In the R console window, you will type your commands. Let's see how. See, here I have R console window. On that, I can type any command I want, here, such as I have typed here x equal to sine of 9 divided by 75 and it is the value of x, etc. Here is your first R session, the R console window under the RGUI desktop. Now coming towards our introduction, the results of the calculation that you have performed can be stored in the objects using the assignment operators. Assignment operator means this an arrow formed by a smaller than character and a hyphen without a space or the equal character. Now these objects that you calculated can be used in the other calculation also. Okay, for example. Here on the R screen I have used a function x, x equal to sine of 9 by 75, another function y and I, the value of this can be can be used in the other function z, ok. z is equal to x plus y, I have used the value of x and y objects in the another object z, ok. And for getting the output I will simply type z on the next line and enter. So you get the answer for your calculation. Now, there are some restrictions when using an object name, ok. The object name cannot contain strange symbols like exclamatory, addition, subtraction, hyphen, etc. Ok. A dot and an underscore are allowed. Also a name starting with a dot is allowed, ok. Now, object names can contain a number but cannot start with a number. You can write x1 but you cannot write 1x as the object name. Okay. R is also case sensitive means upper case and lower case means two different objects. Upper case x is a different object and lower case is x is a different object. Here is an example for suppose I have in this example I am creating a row vector named x okay from 1 to 10. X, is, x value will be from 1 to 10. In this row vector, I will find out how many elements. These are my elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many elements are greater than 10 and how many are less than 5? Okay. So the answer will be the elements that will be greater than 8 are only 9 and 10. So we will get all false and only 2 true 9 and 10. Similarly, for x less than 5, you will get the output is true and false. The elements that will be less than 5 will give true and other will give false. Ok. And when taking both the cases simultaneously using an OR operator, you will get all the elements which are less than 5 as true and all the elements which are greater than that as true. You can try this on R. Now to get all list of all the objects that you have used in your current session are then you type the function is and the open bracket then you will get name of the all the objects that you have used in your current session and to list all the objects is starting with the letter x you have to type is in the bracket pattern equal to in x ok then you will get the list x and x2. Now, suppose if you want to remove some of the objects from your current session that you use, then type rm and in the bracket the names of the objects. Okay, if I want to remove x and x2 object from my current list, then I will type rm, x and x2. Okay, now let's create two small vectors with data and a scatter plot. Suppose I am having z2 equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And Z3 equal to 6, 8, 3, 5, 7, 1. These are all elements. And plot Z2, comma Z3. And give the title my first scatter plot. This will type. This will plot a graph between Z2 and Z3. And give the name my first scatter plot. See here, I have. I have got this plot of Z2 versus Z3. 
by plotting z2 on the x axis and z3 on the y axis and given the name my first scatter plot to this plot using these commands one thing to be remembered is r is case sensitive language okay so f o o capital this and this all these three are different objects now let's see how to use the r language while some basic program here i have used a function a function suppose say object x equal to sine of 9 by 75 and a object y equal to log of x plus x square okay now i want to get the outputs then i will type simply x and enter for y i'll type y and enter okay in this way you can use the r software for simple calculations now something about the r workspace the objects that you create during an r session are hold in memory and the collection of objects that you currently have is called the workspace okay this workspace is not saved on the disk unless you tell r to do so for example this is my r console okay i want to close i'll click here so it will ask me to save the workspace image or not if i'll do yes then it will save if i'll do no then it will not save and if you don't save the workspace that means your objects are lost okay and if you select to save the workspace image then all the objects in your current r session are saved in a file that is dot r data this is a binary file located in the working directory of r which is by default the installation directory of r now the another way to save your workspace image is you can go on the file menu of your r software and then you get a option save workspace you can go there and save the workspace or you can use save dot image function also okay this is the program for that now suppose you saved your workspace image and when you restart r the next time it will restore the workspace and so you will get all the objects that you use in this current session also okay so you can also expl explicitly load a saved workspace file that would be the workspace image of someone else go to the file menu and select the load workspace i'll show you this option so here is our r software and our r console here we have the option file click on it you will get save workspace and load workspace option on clicking on save workspace it will ask you where to save the file the workspace and similarly for the load workspace you can also reuse the upper commands that you that you have your, in your current session by the upper and down arrow keys okay the up and down arrow keys that we have on a keyboard we can use them to see as a example on pressing the upper key i'll get the commands that i have typed okay and on pressing the lower key down key i'll get the commands that i have used recently now an important thing that r gets confused if you use a path in your code like c colon single slash my document single slash my file dot txt that we generally use for a destination file this is because r sees single slash s and escape character okay instead of this we have to use c colon double slash my documents double slash my file dot txt or the <laughs> format like this one now here are some functions now to print the current working directory you have to use the command get wd and open bracket 
for getting the list of the objects in the current workspace you have to use is function and to change to my directory use set wd and in the bracket write your directory path okay for example you can write in the c colon slash docs slash my directory now these are some other functions that will help you on r for example for learning about the available options on r you can type the function help and the option name in the bracket for viewing the current option settings you can type options bracket and for the number of digits to print on the output you can type the function of options digit equal to 3 okay in here in place of free you can type any number you want to print on the output now work with your previous commands for displaying last 25 commands you can use the keyword history and for displaying all the previous commands you can use the keyword history max dot show equal to infinite now here is a command for saving your command history and for recalling your command history thank you have a nice day